Who came up with the idea to bring the kids fishing? Originally, I've got to say it was myself. I got collared into uh, fishing, to taking a group fishing, and I didn't want to go because I hated fishing, and I'd never ever been. And I took this group, I took several groups from different communities met up, and they were all going to smack everybody and get fighting. And I was a bit apprehensive we were going to have a bad day. And then when we got onto the water, around the pool, around the pond, the, the transformation was, it were gobsmacking basically from to see they'd gone from, I'm going to smack him to, do you want to end with that mate? It was lovely. And I just thought then if young people can get this out of fishing, it's got to continue. So I got in touch with Environmental Agency uh, and they pressed away we are three years later. It like chills you out and it, something to calm you down if you're stressed. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's such a, a, a a gap in generations now because people are living longer and it's getting harder and harder to get on with young people but fishing just seems to break down all that is. Oh come on you were taking them off last week. I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> Put your teams gently. I enjoy helping other people because using my knowledge what I've got to help them fish. So it helps them out and he just gets past what I teach them. They'll teach someone else and they'll teach someone else. What can I say? This is the artist interviewing Dylan Foster at Baker's Pond. He's just caught a nice fishy. This is him trying to get a hook out of its mouth, which is pathetic at. Pathetic, Jordan, is such a negative word. Only used on Foster. Is it out yet? No, it's not. Might you pull out? Yeah, but every time I try to pull it out, it just goes back in. Does it want that maggot? Yeah. I'm going to ask him what he likes about fishing and what calms him down. Stuff like that. Just stuff like that. What calms you down when you're fishing and when I catch something like that? <laughs> A big head. <laughs> um, now when I catch nice decent sized fish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know a bit, but not as much as they've taught me. A family member took fishing before. Yeah. Um. Have you made any new friends whilst fishing? Uh, yeah. Everyone who's been here, really. Uh, what have you gained from fishing? Tuesday you can just come here and relax and fish. Is there any tips what the coaches have told you what's really helped you? Um, yeah, the throwing the maggots out and then lifting your pole so that the maggot falls at the same pace helps to disguise it as one of the ones that's been thrown and it makes it go fish go for it easier. Do you think it's like helped you a lot what the coaches have told you? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be a, a blonde girl study away a rod if I didn't, if they wouldn't have said anything to me. I didn't, know, didn't have a clue how to fish before these guys taught me. So, like, what the coaches have told you have helped you a lot then? 
Yeah, I wouldn't have caught him. Ball and I caught it at uh, Sheffield, Sheffield Waters. A shark? A, a baby shark. In whereabouts? In Sheffield, I can't remember where I were at. Ten. Wow. I might fish 30 different depths. I'll start off, I'll plummy to it, and I'll start off on bottom. And then, after a bit, you try six inches shallower and you work your way up till you find what level of fish you're feeding at. And then eventually it'll go quiet so you start moving your way back down. And you all continue altering depth. And, and the difference between a good angler and me, like Martin and me, Martin will come to the same conclusion as me, but he'll do it half an hour before. Yeah, I'll say, oh, the, the fish, I'm fishing deep water now, I'm catching um, shallow. I, well, I think I am, because I always enjoy it. I've never, horrible. ever been fishing, even when it's been a horrible, horrible weather, a horrible day, and not enjoyed it. So I think in some ways I'm quite good. But I don't catch many fish. A lot, like, it calms you down. And you just forget about everything that's going up at the side of fishing. And just concentrate on fishing. But they haven't been catching on this and then they started catching again, so obviously the fish have been spawning. Yeah. For this warm weather it's brought them on to spawn, right? So once they are spawning they're not feed. They have one thing on their mind and that's spawning. And then he says, in this mystical Christian tradition, the enjoyment of God is actually a, a looser effect. It's to do with lust. It's, it's no longer an intellectual thing, it is an experience of satisfaction and gratification. But the most I thought about who could help. I racked my brains for a solution. The book I had been reading bought the title The Robber's Cave and the Shara Moreno or The Angel of All the Crest. My father had come home and fallen asleep. I climbed out of my bed, stole out of my, out of my bedroom and got dressed. Then I wrote a note. You shouldn't work your fingers to the bone. I'm going to Spain. I'm going to get them. I put this note on the table with a piece of dry bread in my pocket, together with two pens for my skittles money, crapped down the stairs, opened the door, 
drew another deep sob of breath, but quietly, quietly, so nobody would hear. And then went down into the marketplace with muffled steps and out along near Gasse, the Lumbitz Abbey, which leads by a little shrine from the two of Spain to the land of the noble robbers of Halfords and Newton. Ah. What did you say about this in the shower? Uh, it will make So what, what would your superpower be? And mine would definitely be time travel. So I would actually just literally go back and walk around. You wouldn't just... go back to playing with the cars? No, because that would defy the laws of time. <laughs> I can't go back as a child and also I'd get locked up. Well, if, if we're inventing play... time travel, you could right. invent anything. You can invent anything. But also, I mean, it, it, to me, it's two things. It's, it's about kind of doing things like playing when you're a kid, when you're totally immersed in the thing you're doing. But also, I think, as we were saying this morning about Daedra, or I think I said to Steve yesterday about <laughs> Daedra. What do you think about um, playing out? Oh, it's amazing. And that's where you the men would get changed before they went out to play football. Never knew that. Ah, well. And then it started to get vandalised, so it kind of disappeared after a while so they decided to demolish it. There's been a quite yeah, will do. That's all that always happens. Is that your den? Yeah that was our den. There's rats in here. Huh? There's rats in there. Where? Well, there wasn't when Alicia went in there. There is. There's always little rats. But if you'd leave it you used to set it up and put stuff in there and just kind of bits you've got from home yeah, and make it comfortable. And then you'd make it really good and then you'd leave it and like you you come back a few days later and someone had been in there and nicked some stuff or kind of trashed it a bit i've got to go there isn't you that always happens you play in there though. but you've got to accept it why do you go in there why what what's kind of feeling this bit used, didn't used to be yes, used as no well, well, it's you her can. den you're not allowed <laughs> you can go in there if you want um I <laughs> is it like this bit used to be really small and we only put it a little bit yeah. then we went overboard and made it so obvious so. yeah but in, on the inside we've extended it to all the way down there is it we like put stuff down is it like about creating a little Careful place of your own guys. huh it's creating a little place of your own that's not me somewhere to hide yeah and, and just be quiet Got to do some maintenance, I think. There's a chair in the tree. Oh, ow, my head. It's burnt. The tree out. Yeah. There's a tree, there's a thing, there's a keep calm and change my bum. And there's me. Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares. You've got to set up there, Connor. Yes. Right. Let's pee in a bottle. Oh, let me out. <laughs> yeah. I'm sat in the chair. Yeah. Connor, shut up. Well, let's. Bill. Does time go quickly in your den or slowly? Uh, slowly when we were building it. Because we wasn't really looking forward to it. If you wasn't looking forward to it, why did you do it? Oh. There's used nappies and everything in there. Come on, guys. Not we at that, can, we, we sort of came a bit later, didn't we, really? Yeah, we did, So when really. we were teenagers. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that was the thing. And um, when you were on the estate, Steve, what were you, what might you, like, when you were playing or you came out to play or you were playing out, what, what did you do? Like, earlier you were saying something about a football. 
Yeah, we used to play. We used to, well, we weren't supposed to. We weren't allowed to. There's, there's, there's signs everywhere saying no ball games. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I did get the police. The, my dad did go mad at me once for bringing the police to our house. What were you doing? I was caught playing football when I shouldn't have been playing football. Can you carry on drawing it, and I'll video you a little bit. This is the big fly where kids slide out. Can you to move oh yes yeah the house we lived in was was quite old-fashioned compared to we even had a well outside the back door but we used to get we used to cut out the cardboard and put them on the spokes so it sounded like a motorbike uh, did you ever do that we had little motorbikes we had a motorbike we had a you had a motorbike well i didn't because the bit the big boys had a motorbike So I couldn't control it. Is it a good feeling though when you've done it? It's a good feeling when I face planted, to be honest. I didn't think about it. I just got back on my feet and that was it. I tried it again. <laughs> like, I don't really care what anyone says, I just get on with it. <laughs> 